Ugh, ads are such poop. Subscribe to ACAST Plus now to skip ads and more for just $1 a month. Click the link in our show notes to learn how. And hey, we're on Patreon too. Your support helps cover the cost of running a podcast. For $2 a month, you can get early access to all our episodes ad-free, plus bonus episodes exclusive to Patreon subscribers only. Visit patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse to sign up now. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys. We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you remember what happened yesterday? A lot of fucking names. So many names. Yeah, and oh, he uh, he mentioned David came up, I think, didn't he? David and his son Solomon. So like, that's Solomon. like one of our hints that this might be the chronicler writing this or whatever. Because, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you know, he's still in love with David. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all I got out of it. I didn't, I mean, it was so many fucking names. I was like drowning in goddamn names by the end of that chapter. It was musicians and gatekeepers. Fuck and the musicians and gatekeepers. They're I know, stupid. I know. I don't and care. I mean, even when I summarized it, I was like, nothing happened. It was all names. I'm all right learning about the dung gate, but I don't care who's fucking guarding the dung gate. Okay. It's true. It's true. That's, that's where I draw the line. It's poop yeah <laughs> so that was nehemiah chapter 12 sure as fuck was and today we're going to be reading nehemiah chapter 13 all right let's go do this okie dokie okay nehemiah 13 chapter chapter 13 nehemiah last book of last nehemiah chapter of uh, nehemiah yeah Okay, let's start over. Ready? Okay. Okay, Nehemiah chapter 13. The last one. The, the last, last chapter. chapter of this book. Yeah. yeah. We're going to finish this today. We sure as fuck are. Hell yeah. We didn't mess that up at all. No. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. On that day. On that day. That one day. That one day. The book of Moses was read aloud in the hearing of the people, and there it was found written that, excuse you, no Ammonite or Moabite should ever ever no be admitted into the assembly of god no commingling. i'll have you know <laughs> because they had not met the Wait, israelites but... with food and water hold on hold on oh, hold on this this sounds like bullshit because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. moses literally married a fucking moabite now i know it, it doesn't specifically say that in the bible but it is highly, but it is suggested. highly suggested and yeah. and kind of known ish yeah like, if you're going to attribute something to him, that's what he, he did marry a Moabite. Yeah. yeah. So, I sin- sincerely doubt that he wrote that in his fucking book. I doubt he did This either. guy is really against co-mingling. Yeah. yeah. He's, got, he's got some sort of fucking agenda uh, here. He's racist. Yeah. That, that's his agenda. Right. So, anyways, as he was saying, no Ammonite or Moabite... Should ever be fucking admitted into the assembly of God, comma, because guess why? Because they had not met the Israelites with food and water, but had hired Balaam to call a curse down on them. Oh, they can remember Balaam, Mm -hmm. but they can't remember the fact that Moses married a fucking Moabite. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't remember none of the other laws. Right. Right. Yeah. But boy, they remember Balaam and his donkey. I mean, they didn't say anything about the donkey, but, you know, that's part I remember. That's for sure. Parentheses voice ready. Yeah. Our God, however, turned the curse into a blessing. Let us not forget. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The guy never, like, I don't recall him actually cursing them. Like, remember, he went off to the mountains himself, Balaam, Mm -hmm. and he didn't go with the, the Moabite leader. He went off by himself. I don't remember him actually cursing. Like, I thought they were actually, like, he, he turned them into a... Um, he did. He, I'm pretty sure he did. Did curse he curse them? them? Yeah. Mm, okay. I'm I'm fairly certain, but I, I'd have to read it again. But it's too boring, so I probably won't. 
Well, I remember there was conflicting information. Cause yeah. Because one, they didn't, like, God didn't want them to curse them. But right. then the Moabat king wanted them to curse them. Mm-hmm. And then, whatever. It was a bunch of shit. It was a bunch and of And there was bullshit. talking fucking donkey. And mountains. He had to go up mountains and stuff, too. Right. And then a, an angel almost killed him. Yeah. True, yeah. true, true. It was a rough trip. It was, I mean, when your donkey talks to you, that is rough. Yeah. I mean, he was trying to beat it. Yeah. So but, maybe don't beat your donkey. Okay. It might but, talk to you. Okay, but if you're an angel of the Lord, be visible. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not just to donkeys, but to people too. Right. Especially if you're blocking the way, ready to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, that whole story is right. Stupid. Yeah, yeah. We're just rehashing. Anyway, okay, whatever. On, on with this chapter. Yeah, Ready? Yeah. When the people heard this law, they excluded from Israel. All who were of foreign descent. Okay. Racist so fucks. you cannot be anything but an Israelite. Yep. And and be there like there is no you can't you can't bring people into the fold. Yeah, it's you just, have to fuck your cousin. You're either Israelite or you're not. You gotta fuck your brother. You gotta fuck your cousin. Seems like a bad plan for spreading the word, you know, spreading the message. They weren't trying to spread the message. Obviously, they were just they were trying xenophobic. to own the land. Xenophobic motherfuckers. Yeah. Before this, Eliashib, the priest, had been put in charge of the storerooms of the house of our God. Okay. He was closely associated with Tobiah. You know Tobiah. No, I I really don't. And he had provided him with a large room formerly used to store the grain offerings and incense and temple articles and also the tithes of grain New wine and olive oil prescribed for the Levite musicians and gatekeepers. Where do they move all that shit to? As well as the contributions for the priests. Mm, Okay. I don't know. Got it. But, but, while all this was going on, I, Nehemiah, was not in Jerusalem. For in the 32nd year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, Mm -hmm. I had returned to the king. Don't forget, I was his cupbearer. Yeah. He needed to bring yeah. that cup to him. Been too I long. had to go taste his food and make sure it wasn't poison. Right, right. Sometime later, I, Nehemiah, asked his permission and came back to Jerusalem. Sometime later. Sometime Not later. Not any specific time. Not a sometime. specific one. No. Got it. Here, I, Nehemiah, learned about the evil thing Eliashib had done in providing Tobiah a room in the courts of the house of God. That's a fucking evil thing? That is evil. What? Okay. Yeah. Their understanding of evil is different from mine. Yeah. Yeah. I, Nehemiah, was greatly displeased and threw all Tobiah's household goods out of the room. <laughs> I kicked his ass out. <laughs> he just needed some storage space, man. He's probably renting it, too. Right? I mean, I bet he paid some money for that shit. Probably. You don't just get to store shit in the house of the Lord without paying some money. Right? I, Nehemiah, gave orders to purify the rooms. Like, today, that would mean, like, burning sage. Right, right. You know? And then I, Nehemiah, put back into them the equipment of the house of God with the grain offerings and the incense. Good for you, Nehemiah. You are doing a great, just bang-up job here. Bang-up job. Yeah. I don't like this guy. No, he's kind of a dick. Like, I don't feel like this is the same guy that wrote Ezra, but I do feel like it's the same guy that wrote Chronicles. You think? I feel like, yeah, hmm. I I could be wrong, but I didn't find Ezra's chapters to be quite as insufferable. Yeah, it's true. It's true. This guy is just like, me, me, I. Right. Guess what I did. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you are you? a gossipy little bitch, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, Nehemiah, also learned that the portions assigned to the Levites had not been given to them, and that all the Levites and musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields. Mm. So. So just shit fell apart while he was gone, I apparently. know. Like, I have to do everything around right. here. Right, yeah. It's a good thing he came back. Mm-hmm. Man, it just would have gone all to hell. All to hell, I'm telling you. You yeah. don't know how difficult it is to be Nehemiah. I'm always in demand. Right. Tasting people's food to make sure it's not poisoned, and then coming here and kicking people out of their rooms and measuring their grass to see if it's too high so that I can tattle to the council that they need to 
pay a fine and yeah, mow he's, their lawn. Yeah, he's the fucking uh, HOA guy or H-O- he's HOV. HOA. It? HOA. Yeah. Yeah, HOA guy that like goes around, yes. you know, checking he's everything. Guy. Yeah. So I, Nehemiah, rebuked the officials and asked them, why the fuck is the house of God neglected, you assholes? Then. Probably because you were gone and we didn't give a fuck while you were gone. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my answer. Like, sorry, man, we didn't know you were coming back. Yeah. If you would have given warning, we right, would have moved him off to a closet right quick. We don't, yeah. we don't like dealing with your shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Then I, Nehemiah, called them together and stationed them at their posts. Mm-hmm. I made them go back to work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All Judah brought the tithes of grain, new wine, and olive oil into the storerooms. I, Nehemiah, put Shelemiah the priest Zadok the scribe and a Levite named Padiah in charge of the storerooms and made Hanan, son of Zakur, the son of Mataniah, their assistant because they were considered trustworthy. And all of Israel was like, my God, this fucker's back and he's being a dick. So Mm. I guess we got to go do this shit. Yeah. It's like it's like when the boss is away and everybody's like, okay, we're still going to get shit done, but we're going to, like, way relax about yeah, it. Yeah, like, we're going to do this then, our way. And then the district manager, like, comes back and, like, it's an unannounced visit and he's, like, going through and he's, like, counting the merch to see what kind right, of right. shit. Like, oh, yeah, going. I was going to get that back in order tomorrow. Sorry. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know to expect you. Yeah, like... No, we don't sweep the fucking floors every day. We sweep them every few days. And if we know you're coming, then we sweep and mop the fucking floor, okay? And the legitimate answer is, stop being such a fucking dick. We're getting along fine without you here. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, lighten up a little bit. Yeah, you racist fuck. (laughs) They were made responsible for distributing the supplies to their fellow Levites. Remember me, Nehemiah, for this, my God. And do not blot out what I, Nehemiah, have so faithfully done for the house of my God and his services. Is he really pitching to God to make sure that people don't forget him? I'm just going to read this one more time exactly the way it is phrased. That's so arrogant. I'm not adding words here when I say this. That's so fucking arrogant. Remember me for this, my God, and do not blot out what I have so faithfully done for the house of my God and its services. Jesus. Yeah. He thinks really a lot of himself. He does. He's like having this discussion with Sky Daddy and they are like besties and they have each other number one on speed dial. Yeah. Yeah. Like get the fuck out of here. It's kind of a sickening scenario here. Yeah. You know, I will have to say this though. So far this chapter, like not as many names. So I'm like happy with that. It it is. We actually have shit to discuss. It is entertaining. I will say that. Right. In those days, I, Nehemiah, saw people in Judah treading wine presses on the sabbath Holy oh hell. no not working on the and, sabbath and bringing they should in, he killed the guy for picking up god killed that guy for picking up goddamn sticks on, on the, the sabbath day, yeah. and these guys are treading wine they're treading wine on the sabbath and bringing in grain and loading it on donkeys why aren't together, they all dead together with wine grapes figs and all other kinds is of it loads. possible that god is inconsistent It might be that God's inconsistent. Shit. Or non-existent. I mean, there's always that possibility. Yeah. And guess what else? Guess what else? Uh, Just don't even guess. Okay. And they were bringing all this into Jerusalem on the fucking Sabbath. Can you even believe it? Yeah. I mean, I can because I don't give a fuck about the Sabbath. Right. Right. But these guys are supposed to care about the Sabbath. So he's like aghast. But these are literal Israelites that should be like dead at this point. Right. If this is the same God. Yeah. They should be dead. They should be dead. Because that motherfucker didn't truck with that bullshit. And they just found Moses' words. Right. They got the fucking words. So So they they know know that somebody died picking up sticks on the wrong goddamn day. Right. Because that's in those stories. Yeah. Yeah. So they just read that and were like, yeah, but. (laughs) <laughs> and they just came back from fucking exile, like yeah. within the last, you know, hundred years or whatever. Yeah, whatever. So like they know what hypothetically, hypothetically, they know what being bad does to them. Mm-hmm. They also know the rules. So like, what the fuck, man? Yeah, yeah. I don't think that it was as serious as um, we're being led to believe it was. Once again, I don't really think the Israelites actually worshipped Yahweh. They worshipped whatever the fuck did something for them. Yeah. They're like, can you please like help my grain grow? Yeah. I need grain. I need can you, to like, not be. 
um, harassed by the king. Right, yeah, just, can you get somebody to lay off me for a bit? Whatever some, makes no. the king happy, yes, that is what I believe, 100%. Right, right. Therefore, I, Nehemiah, warned them against selling food on that day, because, you know. Not working, it's, but It's selling. my business. Yeah. Yeah. I have to go tell them. Mm-hmm. People from Tyre, Tyre, who lived in Jerusalem, were bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise mm. and selling them in Jerusalem on the Sabbath to the people of Judah, for fuck's sake. Yeah, what are you doing? I, Nehemiah, reboot. 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 I, Nehemiah, rebuked the nobles of Judah and said to them, what the fuck is this wicked thing you assholes are doing desecrating the Sabbath day? Yeah. My goodness. I'm so embarrassed. Can't even believe you guys are still alive. Right? And And then I, Nehemiah, continued to say, didn't your ancestors do the same fucking things, you morons? They did. So they that our that. God brought all this calamity on us and all this on the city? It's like you don't even learn, you dumb fucks. You know, any God that punishes them to that extent for fucking working on the Sabbath mm-hmm. really is a dick. Yeah, that's I mean, true. Because really that day is set apart, hypothetically, to worship you, your mm-hmm. lordship. Yes, your and lordship. And if... We don't do that. You either kill us or banish us from our land. Yeah. That's some major egotism. That's what I'm that's saying. Just ill placed and like not cool. Right? Like I demand a day that you just do nothing but worship my ass. Right. Oh, you I can't, can't you can't understand it because it's from you're looking at it from a human perspective. Can you okay, but let's look at it from a human perspective, shall we? Let's just say you have three kids at home, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's say you you walk in one day and you tell your you sit your wife down and your three kids and you say okay look everybody um, I really like Thursdays and it's my off day I deem that you shall um, you shall only worship me on that day and that that is no, all you, you shall you'll do you'll worship me like the rest of the week too but on that but day that day that's all you'll do that's all you'll do yeah, yeah. that's what this is mm-hmm. that's and and yes it sounds as ridiculous. As that would sound, saying to your fucking kid and your wife. Yeah. Because, no, you're right? you're fucking loony. Yeah, like, they call that codependency, and husbands are like, you're too needy, get the fuck away from me. <laughs> and, yeah, that that's how that goes. Right. That relationship doesn't last. No, no. So, okay, I'm still Nehemiah, and I'm still speaking. Okay. Okay? Yep. So, I continued. Now you are stirring up more wrath against Israel by desecrating the Sabbath. Ugh. Mm -hmm. End quote. Mm -hmm. When evening shadows fell on the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I, Nehemiah, ordered the doors to be shut and not opened Mm. until the fucking Sabbath was over. Damn, they made all those uh, people with their shit stay outside the doors. Yep. They Mm. were like, get out, bye. I, Nehemiah, stationed some of my own men at the gates so that no load could be brought in on the Sabbath day. Ha <laughs> ha. I won. That's Once rough. or twice, the merchants and sellers of all kinds of goods spent the night outside Jerusalem. Ha <laughs> ha. Whatever. But I, Nehemiah, warned them and said, why do you spend the night by the wall? If you do this again, I, Nehemiah, will fucking arrest you. What? Why, why do you care if they spend the night by the fucking wall? Because they're, they're sneaking not out. Working. They're, they're just working. They're working. They're working. Oh, my God. They're working. They're working and you're uh, arrested. They're working. Okay. There will be no working. How far away do you have to camp before, you know, he didn't arrest you? <laughs> you have to be in your own house. Go home. Okay. Yeah. He's got this city on lockdown. Sure. From that time on, haha, they no longer came on the Sabbath. I win everything always. Then I, Nehemiah, (laughs) commanded the Levites to purify themselves. I commanded them to do this and go and guard the gates in order to keep the Sabbath day holy. Yeah. I made them work. Gotta keep that Sabbath day holy. I made them work on the Sabbath (laughs) day. Yeah. Right? right? Yeah. Oh. But it's okay in that instance because Mm -hmm. it was deemed that it was needed. Yeah. By who? By Nehemiah? Nehemiah. 
Oh, but here we've got another. He's he's going to talk to God. Ready? Oh, okay. Remember me for this oh my also, God. my God, and show mercy to me according to your great love. He's not even asking for direction. He's just telling God not forget him. I know. Is that how fucking arrogant? Put me in heaven at your right hand. Like he's putting people to work on the Sabbath. And he's not even saying, hey, God, is this cool? Right. You know? He's like, I did No, do he's this. like, I'm doing this. Fuck yeah. you. Yeah. And uh, God, you're going to make sure I don't get forgot for this because fuck you. Y'all. I'm doing a good fucking job down here, man. Look, I am doing so good. I have a whole book named after yeah, me. Yeah, right? And I must. I wrote it. I'm definitely getting into heaven. I wrote it myself, but so. Right. I didn't write it on the Sabbath. But even if I did, it was worship. I did say, my God, my God, my God a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, that sounds a lot like Christians today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. So anyways, moreover, in those days, I, Nehemiah, saw men of Judah who had married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. I thought we already covered this. Like, Guess how I felt about that. Not good, probably. Not good at all. Yeah. Half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod. Not that. They're multilingual. Or the How language can you possibly accept that. Or the language of one of the other peoples, gross. Wow. And did not know how to speak the language of Judah. That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that sounds also like Republicans. I know it does, right? Like, like go back to your country. Right, and yes. We speak we English, speak English here. here. Yeah. Like, no, actually it's not the national language even, so not even close, you ask. We don't have a national language. Right. Yeah. Um, this no is, melting pot and all. This is where Republicans got this from. Fucking Nehemiah. <laughs> I, Nehemiah, rebuked the fuck out of them and called curses down on them. I beat some of the men and pulled out their hair. <laughs> what the fuck? Did he really? I, yeah. Yeah. I, Nehemiah, beat some of the men and pulled out their hair. Oh, my God. I'm awesome. I'm the best. My shit smells delicious. You want to eat my butt. Mm. Mm-hmm. I, Nehemiah... I think that might have been, you know, thrown in there. Mm. Yeah, I don't think that was in the Bible. My, it might have been my addition. That, that might have been It's addition. just he likes himself so much. He really does. He really does. I, Nehemiah, made them take an oath in God's name. Was this after he beat them and pulled their mm-hmm. hair out? Okay. Mm-hmm. And I said, you are not to give your daughters in marriage to their sons, nor fuckers are you to take their daughters in marriage for your sons or for yourselves because otherwise i'll beat you and pull your hair out right not yeah. god will punish you right or, i'll be angry yeah nehemiah is gonna fucking punish your ass yeah was it not because of marriages like these that solomon king of israel sinned no it so, was because he married thousands of Jesus women Christ. and worshipped all their various gods you yeah dumb ass it had nothing to do with oh my god I hate this guy so That's much. That's such a bad justification for this. Right? Right? Among the many nations, there was no king like him. He was loved by his God. Wait, Solomon? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, okay. And God made him king over all Israel. But even he was led into sin by foreign women. No. It was the women no. who led him what into the, sin. No. He don't... was innocent. <laughs> Give me a fucking break. He had thousands of women. Thousands. <laughs> it was, you can't tell it me. It was all the thousands of women's fault. That is such bullshit. Right? Wow. Yeah. Now the way this is this is written so bad. I hate this guy. This is so bad. This guy is horrible. Must we hear now that you too are doing all this terrible wickedness and are being unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women? Ill. Ill. <laughs> One of the sons of Jehoi, Joy, Joy, Joel. Okay, and hold on. Broken hold on. record starts. I know, I know. Hold on. I got to stutter. Hold on. Hoyeda. Uh, Hoyeda. Hoyeda? Yeah. Okay. One of the sons of Hoyeda, son of Eliashib, the high priest, uh-huh. was son in law to send Ballot, the uh, Horonite. Okay. Horonite. Okay. And I, Nehemiah, drove him away from me. Boom. Oh, yeah. Good, good, <laughs> that happened. Good job, I Nehemiah. Did, I did that. Yeah. I drove that asshole away from Make me. Make sure God knows you did it. I wouldn't want him to forget. Oh, uh, actually. Oh. Actually, I yeah. am about to talk to oh, God okay, now. Okay, yeah. Talk to God, not 
with God. Talk at God. Yeah, yeah. talk at God. Remember them, Fortunate. my God, because they defiled the priestly office and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. So I, Nehemiah, purified the priests and the Levites of everything foreign and assigned them duties each to his own task. You, Nehemiah, are fucking insufferable. I am insufferable. I, Nehemiah, also made provision for contributions of wood at designated times and for the first feuds. So, remember me with favor, my God. The end. <laughs> Not <laughs> once did he ask right. anything of God or ask any advice from God. Or tell God how great he is. No, yeah. It was all about making sure God remembered him. Don't forget I'm awesome. Like how, that that's not... That's not how you are supposed to... Okay, just given the history that we've gone through so far of yeah. the Bible, that is not how you're supposed to talk to God. That is not If there all. were a God, yeah, that was not the correct tone. That was, that was not. not the correct way to talk to him. You are a busybody. And if this was a movie, you would be the one learning the lesson. God the would have fucking movie. bitch slapped your ass yeah. into the goddamn ground and then smote you and then opened the ground and swallowed you and burnt you. Because you're and such a fucking arrogant shit. And Nehemiah, guess what? Solomon what? would not have liked you. Yeah. No. <laughs> so there. <laughs> you're, like, you're a dick. Go away. I have the C. Yeah. What do you have, Nehemiah? Right, right. A ruler to measure people's grass? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right. So that was uh, that was the end of Nehemiah. That was the end of Nehemiah. And Nehemiah is quite a fucking ass. He's a character, isn't he? He's I mean, a card. He's, he's something. Cad. He's something. <laughs> he sure as hell thinks a lot of himself. Oh, he's a trip. I, uh, I, that, I'm glad we got past the names and into a little bit of story to learn. Because uh -huh. like that gave me a taste of Nehemiah and it yeah. left a really bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. That was really, I don't like him. Like Ezra struck me as somewhat sincere. Somewhat, like, yeah. He wasn't insufferable. He seemed sincere. Right. Nehemiah, oh. he's the chronicler all over. He's really just I'm going to do more research and see, because um, I saw that there were some people saying that it's all the same, but then there was somebody else that I didn't look into because, you know, rabbit hole, Yeah. who said that um, something may have been edited over later on. And I'm thinking it was Ezra. I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking that, because Ezra's in this book, right? Mm -hmm. Like they mentioned Ezra. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this guy, Nehemiah, just was like, I'm just going to make myself the star of a story here. Yeah. And like he wrote Chronicles and then he saw Ezra's like story or whatever. And he's like, I, I'm going to write me a story too. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like anybody back then would know. There were so right. few people that could read and write mm -hmm. that if you added the story... There's not going to be a lot of people questioning it right. as long as you knew the right way to do it. You know? Exactly. And put it to the right people and said, here, this is all part of this group and yep. whatever. You know? So. Yep. All right. Well, we finished another book of the Bible. We sure as fuck did. Yeah. Um, which means that this weekend we will be back. Um, I, don't probably... have, I don't have it all planned out. But, but we're going to be back with some stuff. There will be a and a There will sure. be... Um, an entire book wrap up. There yep. will be a contradictions. You're always wrong. Right, right. Um, there will be a Patreon. A Patreon. There will be the weekly wrap up. And replay. You mean? Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there'll be all that, and then we'll be back. Um, pos. I. I, I don't want to give exact time frames here, but maybe maybe on Monday. No, but, it, it won't be on Monday. No, because we got too many episodes to do. Yeah. Um. So, but at some point, when we're done with all the extra episodes for Nehemiah, we'll be back with... Esther Chapter 1. All right. Well, we'll see you guys in the upcoming episodes here, and then uh, and, and then the other ones, too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I thought I was going to say something clever, but then it just... It, it was shit just you're, running out of my mouth. You're no Nehemiah because you're, you're able to, like, admit when right. you sound stupid. Yeah. Whereas, Which is a lot. Oh, I'm here to vouch for that. Yeah. But yeah. but I do too. Right, right. So. We're stupid together. We are. That's I the love important you. thing. <laughs> love you. All right. Let's get the fuck out of here. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.
Hey, wife, I guess that's the end? But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.